Welcome to this week's Down Home with Tina. Happy day, everybody. If you haven't been able to tell what this is, no, it is not a space suit, is it? Why do I feel like I can't move my head? I'm like, really? <laughs> Janice Salm is with me. She is the president of the Fairfield County chapter of the Beekeepers Association. And I'm going to take this off so I won't get too warm. This suit, by the way, is really warm. It is a beekeeper suit. Is that correct, Jeannie? That is correct. Suit? Yes. What yep. is this used for? Well, when it's all zipped up tight, which yours isn't at this <laughs> <No>. point, it <laughs> really protects you from getting stung, basically. When you're working with tens of thousands of bees, that's what you want to wear. Tens and thousands of bees. Okay. So before we get into that, we're going to hold it right there. The Fairfield County chapter of the um, Beekeepers Association. Mm -hmm. How many years have you all been around? We actually got started last January. Um, oh. We had an interest meeting, sent out 300 postcards within a 15 mile radius of downtown Lancaster yeah. to see if there was a need, which we felt there was. And we had 75 people show up at the library in the middle of an ice slash rain slash snowstorm predicted. And wow. uh, by, by the time we were in our third month, we had almost 100 members. So uh, really is a need for this club in this area. Too far to drive to, to, for beekeepers to go way up to Newark or Circleville yeah. or, or Columbus. So You say a need. Why is there a need? Beekeeping is something that you never know enough about. Uh, it's agree. gotten harder and harder as the years have gone on um, with mites and, and disease coming into this country that's affecting the population of the, the pollinators. Um, so beekeepers have to continually you know, educate themselves, learn what the new research is saying so that we can keep our bees alive and healthy. Absolutely. How often do you guys meet? We meet once a month okay. and we have an educational speaker every month okay. so that we can keep learning and, and growing as beekeepers. Did you have somebody come from another chapter that was learning from there and then wanted to bring it, of course, to Sometimes, our Sometimes, um, and we do have, there are a lot of beekeepers that are kind of on the speaker circuit that mm -hmm. are um, very um, accomplished, long-time beekeepers yeah. that do speaking around um, the state and so forth. We also have um, a speaker bureau sort of with Ohio State Beekeepers Association, mm -hmm. and they uh, create different programs maybe two or three each year that they are willing to come out and talk about to uh, different clubs. Jeannie, why did you decide to do and get involved with this? My husband has always <laughs> wanted to I do I love beekeeping. it when somebody does that <laughs> like that because it's like, oh, this is going to be fun. It was my husband's <laughs> dream. You know, we'd, we'd see beehives in people's uh, yards and we kind of live a little about, bit out in the country. I never wanted to do it. I was a school teacher, I had too much to do and a bag of papers to grade that went everywhere with me and I said to him 10 years ago, your project, not mine, don't want anything to do with it. But I like information mm -hmm. and I'm always you know, gathering things to, te to teach my students and so I just started reading the mm -hmm. books that were laying around the house and I got oh, hooked. Neat. <laughs> So, so you were now educating, I'm out there self educating mm -hmm. yourself with mm -hmm. the books and things. Yep. And we did you one day, did you say, hey, honey, let's go do this. Let's do it. I'm ready. Yeah, I, I kind of got interested in the products of the hive and the, okay. the medicinal and health benefits of those things. And that's when I kind of said, OK, I want to come out and see this for myself. What is one of the biggest misunderstandings when it comes to folks when it ha has to do with the honeybees? You know, I think people blame the honeybee for stings a lot when they really aren't honeybees that are stinging. Okay. When people get stung, it's typically yellow jackets or wasps. Mm -hmm. Honeybees are not really aggressive. I've worked for years in my gardens around the bees, and if mm -hmm. you leave them alone, they'll leave you alone. Yellow jackets, you said, um, what was it? Honey wasps. Uh, uh, yeah, the bumblebees? What about bumblebees? Bumblebees wasps? are not aggressive, but no. it's the wasps okay. and the yellow jackets. They're very aggressive. They sting more than once. Okay. And they will come after you for no reason. <laughs> Okay, so a honeybee is just really pretty much minding its own business. Unless, unless you're, you know, after in their home, you have to be careful. Okay. Um, but unless they get stuck somewhere, typically when you get stung by a honeybee, it's be they like dark places. So they like mm -hmm. in your hair, they like in your ears, up your sleeve, okay. and up your pants leg, and then they get trapped and mad, and then they sting oh, you. I'd be mad, so. and I want to sting somebody if <laughs> I was That's why we wear the suit. Well. Yeah, <laughs> That's yep. right, yeah. yeah. So what are some of the really neat things about honeybees that folks don't know about that might be interested well, in Well, I think probably the most inter interesting thing to me is that everything that they make in the hive has 
value to us as human really? beings. Really? Not just for them. You know, the honey is, is incredibly beneficial um, both as, as, a, as a healthy food, but mm -hmm. also medicinally it has um, mm -hmm. antibacterial properties. They're even using honey in just about every hospital and nursing home in the country for wounds, mm -hmm. burns, bed sores, MRSA. Um, you know, so beeswax has medicinal benefits as well. Yeah. And there is another substance in the hive called propolis that is a resin that the bees pull from tree buds and bark that most people in our country don't know about. And that kills bacteria, viruses, fungus molds, and yeast in the hive but it also kills many of those germs that affect us as well. For the consumer, like myself, who would want to go out and purchase some honey, mm -hmm. what am I looking for in the right kind of honey for if I want it for medicinal purposes or to put in my tea well, or different you things? You definitely want raw honey. Okay. And that means it's been extracted from the hive and it has only been strained just to get large things out of it. But okay. you, honey has to have pollen in it or it's not classified as honey. Okay. And really to get raw, true raw honey, you need to buy it from a beekeeper. Okay. Because typically the honey on the shelf in the grocery store is not raw honey. Okay. It may not even be pure honey. Okay. If it's, it, it, the, the issue with raw honey is that it crystallizes. All, all raw honey crystallizes at some okay. point. So grocery stores would have a problem with older oh, jars of honey yeah. sitting on the shelf and crystallizing. So many times it's been processed and heated. Okay. And then it doesn't have many of the beneficial properties once oh, it's been heated. Okay. I think I've seen at one of the local stores that they had at one time, I haven't been in it in a while, that um, it was like an area of locally mm -hmm. homegrown mm -hmm. things and I'm thinking honey was one of them. Absolutely. So is it becoming more available for folks? It is. Like Farm markets and we have Keller Market here in, mm -hmm. in uh, yep. Lancaster that, that carries um, raw honey. Perfect. Okay. Many of us. So let's talk about what it takes to be a beekeeper. Is it difficult? <laughs> There's a lot to learn and it, and it isn't easy. It's, it, it, people think that you don't have to do too much, but that's really not true anymore. Mm -hmm. um, the Varroa mite came into this country about 20 years ago and that has really changed beekeeping for everyone Okay. because it is very destructive to the life of the bee. Um, but takes some equipment, costs about $400 to start with, just okay. to get the hive, the suit, okay. and all the tools. Okay, and which I mean, for a hobby, and then mm -hmm. what you will get out of it if you follow the right instructions, right. could be a lot, do you think? Or no. is it more self-gratification once it's it gets It's kind of to what where they say about a boat, it's a hole in the water that you dump money into <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> That's funny. And beekeeping <laughs> can be like that. <laughs> okay. um, because it's just so difficult to deal with the mites and getting them through the winter, <sighs> a lot of us deal with the death of hives. And, you know, at least for the first couple of years, you probably won't get any income from your, for, from your honey. And if you're a small beekeeper, you'll probably make enough on honey eventually that you can just okay. sustain your own, your own practice. Can anybody be a beekeeper? Absolutely. Do you, can, do you have well, to have a certain amount of property, you know, things like that? There, there are rules in every okay. community, from the township to the okay. county to the cities to villages. So you have to check with your local authorities and your okay. local ordinances to see what is allowed. How important is it for us to have our honeybees? Well, honeybees uh, pollinate a third of our food sources for fruits and vegetables and half of the, of the wild forage for animals. So without the pollinators, we won't have a third of what you see at the grocery store. So if you have 400 bucks and you want to put some time for helping helping all of us, really, I think, and you are allowed <laughs> to have a beehive in your where you live and everything. Mm -hmm. Would you recommend folks to at least try it once? Oh, absolutely. Or, or mean, if really, you don't. Because this you, is important. This is a bigger, have, bigger picture. If of you stuff. don't have the property, you don't have the, the ordinance in, in, in where, around where you live, you can always do other things. You can stop using chemicals on your yard. Okay. You can oh, plant yes. flowers for pollinators. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, so there are things you can do to help the pollinators without raising bees. Very good point, Jeannie. But this is a smoker. I can tell. I smell like a smoke right now. A smoker. I smell it because the, the, the suit, suit mm -hmm. is going to have that mm -hmm. on it. And then this is a smoker, which... Puff it. Where do I? Squeeze the bellows. Mm -hmm. Okay, there we go. I was like, what am I messing So we, okay, we build so a, little, like a little fire in there, and once it get once you get rid of the flames oh. and it's just smoking, okay, yeah, you that can is see. a warning to the bees. You smoke the inside and under the lid before you get into the hive. Okay. And that warns the bees that something's happening, 
and they typically will go down further in in the hive so that when you open the lid they don't all fly out in your okay. face. Okay. A lot of people say that the bees think there's a fire and they actually start loading their bodies with honey in case they have to leave. So it keeps wow. them busy while you're inspecting. Jeannie, I know we're about out of time here. So what, if anybody is wanting to find out more about this, because you've got other stuff, we've got other tools and These things we didn't get to, to get but mm -hmm. what exactly or how can they contact you to get well, involved? Well, we certainly, we have a website, fairfieldcountybeekeepers.org. We're also on Facebook. And um, certainly the best thing to do is take a class, a new yes. beekeeper class, and okay. learn about it before you jump into it. Okay. And then belong to the club and go every month. And right. uh, we even have a, a club apiary, which is a bee yard yeah. out at the church where we meet because oh, the pastor nice. there is a beekeeper who's been beekeeping for 40 years. Nice. So we are nice. able then to train people in the actual bee yard hands-on. So All right. that's the answer. There you go, folks. If you want to get involved, please contact Jeannie. I thank you so much. I've just right. been interested in bees. <laughs> Not that I, I keep my distance, but it's important. So it's been very yes. important to have you here. And I want to thank you so much, Jeannie. You're welcome. I'll be back yes. in just a minute. You're watching Down Here with Tina. The Frankie Smith Funeral Home and Crematory in Lancaster and the Johnson Smith Funeral Home in Baltimore have a long and wonderful history of serving our community. Feel free to give us a call at 740-653-0652. Stop in and see us at either of our two locations, 405 North Columbus Street in Lancaster and 207 South Main Street in Baltimore. Respect for tradition, regard for change. Hi, I'm Brandon. I'm a recovering addict. For 10 of the last 11 years, I've been struggling with addiction, homelessness, incarceration, and just loneliness. However, since getting clean this past year, I've accomplished more than I have in those 10 years combined. After attending outpatient counseling services, inpatient counseling services, living a sober living house, and attending 12-step meetings, I've been able to regain control of my life and begin to achieve goals I've always dreamed of. Addiction can destroy lives in many ways. Whether you need help with childcare or financial assistance, everyone deserves a new beginning. Recovery supports are just that, supports for recovery. My life mattered. Your life matters too. This message is brought to you by the Fairfield County Adam H. Board. Welcome back to Down Here with Tina. I have got Mindy Buzzer with me. She is a gal who I have known probably now for, we were just talking about this. It's been over 10 years, probably. I think, mm -hmm. because you got involved with something. And I think this is the first time that then that I had met you it was the um, Dr. Payne you were working with Dr. Payne for the MS walk. Did, yes for the mm -hmm. MS walk yep. now I'm trying to remember you were helping with the yeah the event itself I was well I and was I did the photography for a couple years okay and then he asked me to chair with him and then I eventually took it over for and I chaired for I think three years on my own yeah, yeah and then that's when the brawl crawl came into play and then it's just all else it was, was like much, yeah. <laughs> a whole lot going on yeah I could totally understand mm -hmm. but it was so fun getting the opportunity to get to know you and Dr. Payne and you were so real and ever since then I've we've crossed paths in other things also. Emma I had Emma and, and yes, cheer. my daughter in cheer. She had my daughter in cheer, which you were a cheerleader in high school. Oh, right? yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So very involved with that. And wow, that was <laughs> what grades? Wasn't that third, fourth, fifth, and sixth? Mm -hmm. that I coached you did? for four years. Yeah. Okay. So, folks, <laughs> that's a lot of girls. All it was once, a lot of girls. About <laughs> almost every night, minus Sundays. Well, no, wait. The games, the games were, were Sundays. Sundays. <laughs> <laughs> the games were Sundays, Sundays. <laughs> yeah. So it was ago. Monday through Friday. Like that's yeah. when we had practice. Yeah. Yeah. And what I want to say is thank you to you because what you taught those girls in that time was getting them prepared and ready for junior high. Because mm -hmm. then when you're in junior high, you really try out. And that's right. where there's only a certain <laughs> amount of girls. So it really, I think, set them up for knowing what they were to expect. That's exactly what up, I wanted to do. <laughs> more rules, stricter rules yeah. when you get into 
well, even now she's More in technical. high school. So yeah, you miss a practice at high school, you miss a game, yep. you know, so it does. Yeah, more technical and mm -hmm. now they can stunt, which mm. I've never even talked about that on the show yet. I just realized I haven't even shared with you all. I've been to com competitive, the competitions, mm -hmm. cheer competitions. That is wild. Our last, um, because I coached with Amy, of course, mm -hmm. and our last two years we were able to stunt with the girls. You were. Yeah. So it would have been Gunner's fifth and sixth grade year. Obviously, Gunner is not a cheerleader. <laughs> <laughs> He's a football player. All. Total football player. <laughs> um, but yeah, we were able to show them some stunting so they could go. Yeah. Yeah, and take it with them. Yeah. Well, I didn't realize that. that was, that's got to be kind of scary as a coach, too. Eh. It's no, fun. You it's no, fun. it's yeah, fun. It was something yeah. new and adventurous. Yeah. Which I want to talk about that. I know, Mindy, this is something that you didn't do back then was, and you may have exercised and things like that, but you didn't do and was not as involved with working out and things like that mm -mm. back then. So you no. do that now. Yeah. Um, and why? Why did you decide that that was something that you um, wanted to do? I lift, well, I, I lifted... Um, about 10 years ago, I, I, start, I had a trainer and I was okay. kind of getting into the lifting world, but it was just because I felt out of shape and I was a mom. I mean, Gunner was four, so I was, mm -hmm. you know, I felt gross and <laughs> I hated my body like most women do. Um, but then I went through a divorce and life got the best of me and I started teaching a class at Jacked Fitness. Mm -hmm. And um, fast forward four years later, Herb and I are engaged and we bought the gym. <laughs> so, um, but my original reason was because I felt miserable. Uh -huh. And so I just started a class, it's called Move and it's grown and I've lost like 60 pounds. And so I got my, kind of got my life back. Yeah, 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 but it's a process, isn't it? It's such a process. It's like People think one it's fast, step. fast, fast, and it's like, yeah. it can't be fast. I say with anything, with health, with you want to redo your whole home or declutter your home, I use those both like hand mm -hmm. in hand. You don't go into the kitchen and go, Bam. I got to do all this mm -hmm. because then you're going to be overwhelmed mm -hmm. and then you're going to be disappointed because you're not going to get to where you want to be at a certain right. time when no, you take, I say one kitchen drawer at a time. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, cabinet so you take at a time. one little yeah. step at yep. a time when it comes to what you feel you need to do to make yourself feel good. I just recently, I, I just was kind of like, Ugh. and me and my best friend have talked about this. We're like, we can't really go outside and walk. It's We're just kind of like, the stuck. sun's not out a lot. Mm -hmm. And we feel pale because we can't get out into the sun. And we're going, what can we do to just make ourselves feel a little bit better? Well, exercise is definitely one of those things. Running, I'm a happy runner. Oh, I used when to I run, love to I run. I haven't been running lately. I loved running. I yeah. ran a half marathon 10 years ago. You did? <sighs> yeah. How did that work out for you? It was fine. I mean, it was just, I trained for, <laughs> I think I trained for 16 weeks, 12 or 16 weeks, and um, I ended up injuring my knee. Oh, okay. Um, on my 10 mile run. So I ran 10 miles without stopping. Like I didn't even walk during 10 miles. But then the following week was my run. And so I walk ran it. But you I still did, finished yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll never well, do it again. You, but. Yeah. I know. I thought, do it's I want to It's one of those like that? one and done things now. Yeah. That's why I'm like, do no. I want to put that on my bucket list? Have mm. I decided that that's just not something that I really want to put it myself in? It is my really cool. Like, it's the the environment and she's talking me and it's very cool it's <laughs> neat it's a very cool experience yeah I'm like woohoo at a 5 or even like a quarter <laughs> marathon like those are those are cool too okay yeah maybe yeah. like we were talking about one step at a time yeah. maybe I need yeah. to to go from I gotta work on the 5k first again because <laughs> I've been so out of You'll it be fine. that I need to do that <laughs> when it comes to passion and somebody who wants to follow their dreams what is the best advice that you can give them just do it <laughs> Just do it. I mean, I think Nike probably got it best when they said that. But for real, like, um, <clears throat> I've been at a lot of crossroads with what we're doing now mm -hmm. with the yeah. gym. And um, I second guess myself. I think everybody second oh, yeah, guesses themselves. Yeah. And it's you just have to go all in and do it. Like baby steps, mm -hmm. but go in 
and do the baby steps. Do you feel that you are making a positive difference in lives of those? Is it men and women or mostly women in your movement? My end is mostly women. Okay. Um, I do like my fitness classes, but I also have like right now I have a series going on. It's called I Am and it's like, it's a small group of women trying to get themselves back because we raise families and we I raise- I love that, yeah. We, I mean, we have significant others and we have work and we have sports and we have college and we have uh -huh. working and we have I want to start this hobby and I want and then we lose like who we are I lost myself big time like, uh, in my divorce done. And mm -hmm. I was a big drinker and I just like I I just lost myself so I'm trying to take little bits of what I've learned over my uh -huh. journey and kind of give back to the women that they're actually we're only one week into it and they're already really, loving it so really, it's called a reset um, well, right, you like it's a reset of who you are. Yeah, yeah, of, basically, yeah. I mean, yeah. Figuring out like, what do I yeah. want to do? Like, I lose yeah. myself and my children. You do, or you, you know? Yeah. I talk about it often. Mm -hmm. Just one child graduating has made me go, oh my. Right. And Gunner's getting older. I mean, he's fourteen, so yeah. It's now it's, it's time. Like you, when they're little, you dump everything you have into them. Or if you're married, you dump everything you have or you own your own business, like yeah. right now, Herb and I are dumping everything we have into our business. So yeah. it's good to like try to take that little mm -hmm. bit of time. That's what I'm trying to do is guide these women on how to take time to themselves and like get yes. themselves back. Like I am a person too. Yes. So. And with all of that being said, you are. So it is important that you do things for you because mm -hmm. I know that you are a giver and you like to see other people grow and, and excel and become what they are. So you as an inspiration to many people in the community and stuff <laughs> will receive gift certificates from wonderful local Aww. folks in the community. And one is Ava Jewelers. <laughs> So Thank down here with Tina and Jewelers, and then um, Ireland Spawn Salon. If you want to go over and treat yourself to some, th they've got so many great things over there, <laughs> like yeah, Thanks. like a derm or nails or whatever. And then I'm Walker Shoes. So. <laughs> Well, thank you. If I had more, I'd give you more. I have but right no now, idea that's all I have. this was going to happen. I know. Oh, thanks. <laughs> that's so it. nice. So, but yeah, I mean, when we've got positive folks in the community, we've got to highlight you all and let you know Aww. that we appreciate you and keep doing what you're doing and changing lives in a positive way. Well, I Yay, appreciate I love it. it. And thank bless you. you for doing what you did with the kids. <laughs> so, <laughs> Mindy, anybody that is interested in finding out more of what you do with Jack Fitness, just um, look up. On Facebook? Facebook, yeah. Facebook, just look up Jacked Fitness Mindy's Place. Um, or look me up, Mindy Bussert. It's B-U-S-S-A-R-T. And I post quotes and yes, I try to be... positive quotes. I try yes. to be just a light for people, so... Yes. And so Thank you so, so much. You're welcome, honey. <laughs> and I will talk to you later. Good luck with everything. Thank you. And you're watching Down Home with Tina. I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> Dagger Law has been part of the Lancaster community for more than 110 years. This is where we live and work. You'll see us at festivals, sporting events, and all around town. We consider our clients as friends, and we walk alongside you through challenging times. Whether you're a growing business, a changing family, facing litigation, planning your future, or dealing with land issues, we're right here. We are local. We are trusted. We are experienced. Dagger Law. Hi again, everybody. Welcome to the high school football game of the week. I'm Jaron Stewart alongside Tim Shoemaker. Tonight, we've got a great one for you. The Blue Carol Bulldogs. We have a great week of practice, even in the rain and the weather. Schneider, lots of running room to midfield. City has gone. Rush Schneider down the near sideline for a touchdown for the Aces. We have a hold on the offense, number 20. That penalty will be declined. They'll bring up fourth down. And we're going to give you this game ball here because you're a Tiberios fan of the game. And thanks for being here, Jacob. Thank you. The Polar Bears are your OAC tournament champions. First time since 2009. What an exciting finish for the Ohio Northern Polar Bears. because you have earned it.
Welcome back to Down Home with Tina. You can watch Down Home with Tina via Facebook, Down Home with Tina, on Spectrum 1021 on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays at 10 a.m., 4 p.m., and 7 p.m. and on YouTube at CLN, your hometown connection. Down Home with Tina is brought to you by Ireland Spa and Salon, also Walker Shoe Center and Ava Jewelers. If you get a chance to stop in at one of those local businesses, I recommend that you do great product, great folks. So I used to make trips down to Nashville and on one of the trips, what led up to this specific trip was I did some country radio out of state. So it was kind of like my own little thing that I was doing and doing different interviews. So I got to know some of, I call country music legends. And one of them is David Frizzell. Some of you might know him as the star of Gonna Hire a Wino to Decorate My Home. And then the other one, You're the Reason God Made Oklahoma. He and Shelly West did a duet, and that was their duet. They were both very popular songs back in a while ago. I wanna say maybe the 80s, and I might be wrong, but I think that I'm safe to say that. Anyways, so I had been interviewing David because he was doing a special album for Buddy Holly Educational Program, something like that down in, I wanna say Texas, it's a few years back. Anyways, so I'm on the phone with him and I'm talking to him and he says, I'm gonna have an album release and he had some other legends that were gonna be on the album and one of them was Merle Haggard. And I went, Merle's gonna be there? He goes, yeah, you wanna come? I go, yep, <laughs> I sure do. So I called my best friend up, Carla, who used to take trips to me, well, with me at that time, on a regular basis and I go, we gotta make this happen. And I go, how, can, can you go? She goes, yeah. So we planned to drive straight to Nashville and then straight back. So we arrive in Nashville and it's the Nashville Hilton is where this is gonna take place. This is the funniest story, guys. And she and I are walking in rather quickly. Now, she always said, Tina, I've known nobody else like you. You walk faster than I, talk faster than I, and eat faster than I do. Well, in this case, I was walking faster than she. So I go walking in, you know the roundabout doors, and we go walking in really, really fast. And I'm in front of her, and I turn around, and this is one of my favorite, all-time favorite stories. Carla is stuck in the roundabout. Like, she's kind of like <laughs> Now, I did see somebody that was approaching her to ask her if she was okay. But I saw her, and I was like, oh, no. And I went on up to the counter like I didn't know her. And now I'm not proud of that moment. But my friend was not really hurt that bad. So I go up, and I say, I say that bad where you know where who I am and what I'm there for and they pointed up to the steps so up at the top of the steps are two of these guys that have these ear ear things in their ears probably speakers or whatever phones or whatnot and I go back over to my friend after she's out of this roundabout and I go what were you thinking she goes I couldn't decide if I wanted to go or if I wanted to stay so I went a little too late and I got stuck and I go oh my so I, I then turn around and we start walking up these steps. You guys, I stood there at the middle of the steps. I crossed my legs because I laughed that hysterical belly laugh because it just flashed in my head of what she looked like when she was stuck up this roundabout. <laughs> and then she starts laughing. Well, we recompose ourselves. I think the guys with the ear things were laughing as well. So we get up to the top, we meet Merle and we come back. We, that was something that we laugh about till this day we laugh about. And so what my message is to you today is this, is sometimes when there's something that you're just not sure of, if you wanna go or if you wanna stay, don't hesitate too long because sometimes you could just get stuck. And I don't wanna see you getting stuck in a roundabout like I did. Well, I don't know, that was kind of funny, but you get, you get the point. I think you know exactly what I mean. Life is too short, so sometimes just don't hesitate too long. I want to thank you so much for taking the time to watch Down Home with Tina each and every week. God bless and good day.